Yo guys, what's going on? Welcome back to Fulfillment Key. Today's a great day, um, <laughs> but other than that, let's get straight into this video. Um, today I'm going to talk about dividend investing, my dividend portfolio, and what I think is going to happen with the market right now. So let's get straight into this video. Um, so I'm going to just quickly go over like what my plan is right now with the entire market as a whole. Um, in fact, I think I kind of want to, you know, look into the S&P and see how it's doing as far as, you know, stock wise, <laughs> chart wise, so I can see kind of like entry points that I can get in for different kinds of dividend stocks. But the first thing I do want to show you guys is here we go. Um, kind of the first kind of I use this app called DivCalc, which allows me to basically track these these dividends. So I want to kind of show you guys what. I'm holding right now and why I'm holding it some of these there's a lot of these actually because my main thing was diversification so there's a lot of them so there may be some that I don't remember that I may have to search up I may have to look into and I hope that's totally fine but let's get straight into it like I said the first one is realty income which is an REIT um, beautiful beautiful we love REITs um, although during a recession people are like oh REITs are gonna you know not survive they're gonna be in a bad position but the reason I picked Realty income was because essentially it's been around for a really long time and they've been paying dividends uninterrupted, excuse me, and also monthly. Like that's the most beautiful thing ever. Like mostly with dividends, they're always quarterly. This one's monthly. So you get paid every single month. Um, they're still paying their dividend. They haven't cut their dividend, which I thought they would. I'm going to sip my tea here. But they have not cut their dividend, which is beautiful. Uh, the next one is AT&T. Um, in fact, I think I'm going to go and look at these tickers as we kind of, um, do this. So let's, let's go ahead and, um, hop into TD Ameritrade. We'll go to balances. Uh, here we are. Not this, not this, uh, there's something else, but yeah, uh, back to AT&T. So why I took AT&T was essentially because I don't know if there's so much of a growth stock, but I know that, you know, AT&T has done well over time it stood the test of time i know it went through one almost bankruptcy i believe back a long time ago but at&t it's not the best growth stock but it will hold its dividend because it has in the past and it will continue to pay through this recession um, and if you guys are confused about the numbers right here um these are just what they pay every month on a monthly basis um not essentially on a monthly basis but the way this app works is it calculates how much you're making on a monthly basis, quote unquote, because you're not getting paid these monthly, but it wants to give you an estimate of like monthly if you were to calculate the entire year together. Um, Cause most of these pay quarterly, but um, yeah, that's AT&T for you. Um, I'm gonna try to figure out kind of why I can't see this here. Um, I don't know why I cannot. Um, let me see if we can make this a little bit bigger. Uh, there we go, uh, AT&T. All right, well, <laughs> there's that. Um, I'm just gonna open a new, tab and then look at the stocks i think it'll make it a lot easier to do um so yeah as you guys can see here um if we look at kind of like the year chart with for at&t um i think that they took a kind of a big sh shit <laughs> in uh 2018 and then they spiked back up in march so they were doing some things right here excuse me and then um they crashed back in you know around march april excuse me again um but yeah so they crashed here and then i kind of bought in because i was like you know I'm trying to build a solid dividend portfolio, so I think AT&T is really a solid pick. Um, as you can see, the yield's also really high. Um, but yeah, that's AT&T. Let me hop into the next stock here. We got Chevron. You guys have cars. If you don't, you know someone that does. They go and fill up gas. Where do they go? They go to Loop. They go to Chevron. They go to ExxonMobil. They go to 76. You know, those are some of the big names. Um, and I think gas stations are going to be around for a long time. Now, the dilemma here with the uh, coronavirus pandemic thing is the fact that, you know, we we have, let's say, kind of a less people commuting, less people driving cars, except for people like me that love our cars. We drive our cars fast. We, we enjoy them. But most people are not driving their cars right now, except for essential workers. So um, that leaves us with um, kind of worried about ExxonMobil. But the thing is, with these gas companies, they usually have really big balance sheets and they've got a lot of cash on hand. So weathering a recession like this will probably not be, you know, that hard for them. Again, I'm not a financial advisor, so 
take everything I'm saying with a grain of salt, do your own research. Um, these are what I have picked with my own research, looking at their balance sheets, looking at the stock performance, and some of them were just like for shits and giggles. Uh, kind of like a few stocks that threw $20 here, $20 there, because they had like a 20 or $30 uh, percent dividend yield. But back to the main scheduled program, which is ExxonMobil, uh, Chevron, gas company. That's all you need to know. Um, but yeah, so let's get into the next one, which is SPHD. Um, I'm going to show that as I go along over here as well. Um, so SPHT, I think, is a great stock because it's kind of like a index fund. I don't know if it was index fund or ETF, but it's kind of one of those two. And it just encompasses the entirety of the S&P 500, picking some of the higher dividend paying stocks that are safe and then coupling them together in kind of a package and then offering it to you. And it offers a dividend yield of 3.94% which is absolutely beautiful because it's safe. S&P 500 attracts most of the big stocks. And right now you can get it at a really big discount. What I will say about a lot of these stocks is that the problem with them is they're low, but they're not low enough. In my opinion, we've seen all time lows around March. I think we're going to see a second wave where we get to these bottoms again around, uh, as you can see, March here, 23rd, we saw $25. I think this may go down to maybe 24 or 23. Um, but I'm buying in slowly as it goes down and down and down because I'm dollar cost averaging as it goes lower and lower. I'm buying in more and more because I don't know where the bottom is and most investors do not. So I think that it's smart to, you know, kind of just buy as it goes down within reason, right? Of course, because you see from here, if we look at a five year uh, chart. This is this has been pretty high for almost five years. So we're getting essentially a discount um, from five years ago. Um, let's see here, 2015, we were at the same price about where we are now. So yeah, but beautiful stock here, uh, great dividend stock pays quarterly, I believe. Um, and yeah, onto the next one, Exxon Mobil, another gas company. So I I've kind of realized that, um, if I try to go through every single stock like this, this video is going to end up being like 30 or 40 minutes. So I'm just going to kind of like briefly go over it and then I'll make a more in detail kind of video, maybe a live stream or something like that, um, to go into it a little bit more. But ExxonMobil, gas company, pretty nice balance sheet, I believe. Um, 18 shares and a $5 monthly dividend yield. Gas company, can't go wrong. Um, they've been around for a while. They probably have a lot of cash on hand. And uh, yeah, so the next one is Duke Energy. This one kind of uh, caught my eye because, you know, Duke Energy is an energy company. And what do people need during a recession? They need energy, they need consumables, they need food and things like that. So this was another one that... I was really interested in um yeah they offer electricity as you can see here i just wanted to make sure that was right but um yeah back to the stocks we have mfa financial which this was one of the uh hail marys that i took i don't know if this company is doing the best p ratio is 2.11 not really that good but dividend yields 47 percent stock though stock now this is where it gets beautiful so we see kind of consistent performance not really going up going down and up and up and up staying around the same at around seven dollars and then we see this collapse to like a dollar so that's why there is such a high dividend yield mainly because they the, the dividend was a lot smaller and then as the price went down the dividend went up because they're paying the same dps which is dividend per share but now the stock value is worth less so the dividend yield goes up but that's more concept for another video but yeah there's that and let's get into the I don't think I'll be able to cover all of these, to be honest, <laughs> uh, to be fair. Coca-Cola can't go wrong. Um, you know, Coca-Cola is people drink it. A lot of people like it. Um, and they don't just own Coke. They own like Dasani. They own a bunch of other drink companies. I believe they own vitamin water. Not entirely sure. Um, but they own a lot of different drinks. So for the next 10 to 20 years, unless they get disrupted, I think that we're safe with Coca-Cola. And I believe it's one of Warren Buffett's favorites. So you can't go wrong there. Um, Altria Group. Just another Hail Mary that I that I saw. Um, I kind of picked on it because I think I, I looked at the P ratio or something like that. And it was it was pretty pretty good. So um, that's why I picked that one. Dividend yield 8.9%. If we look at the year five year chart, we've had these little wave things going on. Um, so here a wave back down. So I bought in hoping that there'd be another wave that I could exit or how looking at how the company does, maybe I could you know exit. Um, out of it or hold on to it and you know get paid dividends off of it but um yeah there's that some of these are these two were also kind of hail marys um they're resource companies and health companies so i i just wanted to get into nhi and ccr but those two are different not very big portion size as you can see 
Uh, Wells Fargo, we all know that, you know, Wells Fargo is a big bank. Um, 1.69 per month, according to that right there. Uh, good yield. Uh, not amazing. I know Wells Fargo's had some bad stuff in the past, but, you know, 8.32% dividend yield. You can't really go wrong there. But yeah, I mean, I think that if I went into everything in this portfolio, I think it would it would be kind of a lot. So I'm just going to highlight the good ones and then some of the Hail Marys, I'm just going to skip over them. Um, so Verizon, beautiful. And I think Verizon is actually holding up pretty well right now. As you can see here, 4.53% dividend yield, but um, we're seeing decent performance. Um, I think this stock is going to go down to maybe like $50 about, but you know, if you buy in on the way down, you're not really losing anything, right? <laughs> so might as well do that. Canadian bank, I just wanted more exposure to um, kind of international banks that were not related to America. So I bought into the Canadian Imper Imperial Bank. Um, instead of kind of going into more of what's in this portfolio, I'm going to kind of look through and see what else is here that's good. Um, Vanguard, can't go wrong with that. Um, IIP, can't go wrong with that either. Store Capital, another financial, wanted exposure to another finance company. Universal, 3M, you know, you buy tape, you buy things like that. Um, that's what 3M does. Uh, masks, now they also offer. Per People's United Financial, another Hail Mary. This, I think this is Bank of Nova Scott, Scotta, Scotia, I don't know. Another Hail Mary. Uh, I just wanted a little bit of exposure to other things um, that paid really high dividends. And I was like, you know, my... I, I'm going to put in 20 40 dollars here if i lose it i lose it if they go bankrupt it's fine it's just 40 bucks i don't really care that much then these yeah most of these are just kind of like smaller hail marys that i'm not really worried about because i'm saving a lot of my cash for when the bigger stocks that i'm interested in go down so i can get them at a really really nice price but i'm gonna go ahead and kind of show you guys basically kind of the dividend yields on here and and what to look for and what i own out of these high yield stocks so here, what's really beautiful about TD Ameritrade is they show you kind of a, a chart of all of the highest paying dividend yield stocks. So as you can see here, we've got, okay, these are just unreal. I don't even, I think these guys cut their dividends, but as you go down here, I've bought into MFA, CCR, CPTA. Uh, these two, this and this are two finance companies. This is, a, I believe, some sort of like industrial company. But um, yeah, so I think that this tool is beautiful because it's going to allow me to kind of do more research for you guys and for myself to find uh, great stocks to kind of look into and we're logged out <laughs> um yeah i mean as far as that goes i mean i think that that's i've covered the majority of the dividend portfolio uh so far i kind of want to do a live video when i'm actually buying into positions because i feel like me kind of talking about this right now is not as it's not as appealing as when I'm actually buying the stocks in the morning. So I think the next video I'm going to do, maybe a live stream, is going to be me actually buying these dividend stocks in the morning, kind of tracking them and then seeing how things go from there. But yeah, I, I hope this video has been helpful. I kind of want to um, just go over the, uh, the dividends uh, kind of categories uh, right now. So um, this is how it's divvied up right now. So we've got technology, 5.5%. I need more exposure to that, uh, but I'm only interested in dividend stocks. The, so for that, I pick like Cisco, Qualcomm, a couple others, and uh, pretty good yields there. So we've got industrials, finance, finance, I'm a little bit overexposed. So there's that <laughs> energy, consumer discretionary and, and other. This is like tons of other companies uh, that are like in different sectors that this app cannot classify. But I just wanted exposure to almost everything as possible. I know, I'm, I, like I said, I'm overexposed to finance. I need to kind of double down on other places. But other than that, I think I think so far I'm doing good. And I'm, I'm looking forward to kind of like pouring in more money as the market goes down and down and down. Um, and seeing how far I can get these great deals for. So, yeah, I hope this video was really helpful. I definitely enjoyed kind of delving into my portfolio and kind of like exposing, unveiling the veil, if you will. Um, kind of just showing like what's going on behind the scenes, how, what I'm investing in and what my goal is. Now, I I wanted to kind of create a passive income course, not only to track stocks, but also different kinds of things that you can do to invest in, such as my last video, which was about Fundrise. This one's about my uh, $23,000 dividend portfolio, which is going to go up and up and up. And uh, I'm going to be tracking that process for you guys because I know a lot of you guys didn't have someone that you could look at and see a portfolio you could see yourselves. So it's nice to have someone else's to look at before you make your own decisions. But 
yeah, like I said, if you guys enjoy this video, make sure to subscribe, like, and comment what other kinds of videos you guys want to see. As always, I love making these videos for you guys, so if you could hit the like button, it would mean a lot. But other than that, have a great day, enjoy your quarantine, and stay investing, and be safe. Peace.